This is a quick lesson on um, intro, let's just say intro, whatever. Introduction to um, linear second order differential equations. So I kind of got two little anti-sets. Um, first one is uh, to solve dp dt equals k times p. Um, this should look familiar. I want you to show the math, the calculus that gets us to p of t equals p naught e to the kt. So go ahead, hit pause, and then I will um, put the um, the full solution up. And you should well, go ahead, hit pause, try it yourself, and then hit play again, and I'll put the solution up. All right, here comes the solution. So first step is to separate variables, divide by p, p multiply by uh, dt. Um, then we integrate, that's the green here. So you get L and absolute value of p is k times t plus a constant. We e to the in black on both sides there. Um, it cancels on the left and gives me just p. Um, from there, I get e to the kt plus c. That's just e to this. From there, I use some exponent rules, and I write this as e to the c times e to the kt, recognizing that e to a constant is still just a constant. I plug in my initial conditions. Uh, p naught is p of 0. It gives me p naught here on the left is e to the c times 1 which is just e to the c is p naught. So I go back to this right here and replace it with a p naught. And I get p of t is p naught e to the kt. So next thing I want you to do is to um, um, recognize that x prime um, equals a times x is really just the same form because it's dx dt equals a times x. And if I were to like go and highlight little pieces like this, oops, sorry, this is that, um, this is that, this is that, and lastly, this guy is this guy, right? Yep, so all those different pieces there kind of line up with this. Um, so um, one thing I can do is rewrite this. So, so I'm going to talk about the how it re relates to poked in a moment. But I could write this as x prime um, minus ax equals zero. Um, but because it has the same structure as this thing, I know that the solution to either one of these. So, so these two statements are equivalent. And that the solution to those two statements is going to be um, x equals e to the, and I'm actually going to change one thing. I'm going to change the a to an r, and you'll see why later. So um, that would be, make this an r. Um, it's just a number, right? It's a constant, right? So x equals r, x prime equals rx, same below it. Anyway, my solution is x equals e to the rt. Um, and actually, it's going to be a constant c times e to the rt. Notice um, this form is the same as this form. It was x prime equals rx, p prime equals kp. So I got p naught e to the kt. Here I just get C. I'm just, it's an arbitrary C. You could think of it as having been back tagged, if you know what I mean by that, um, equals E to the RT. It's just the totally same structure. So this right here is called the general solution. Um, for example, so that's like all the solutions. Any, any C value would cover all the solutions. If I were to talk about X equals 5 e to the rt, or x equals um, 2 e to the rt. These would be called particular solutions. And that's because um, the c value is solved for. So um, what I want you to recognize here is that um, this is just an easy equation that we could solve, this x prime equals rx. We've done it many times and we've done poked, 
The solution to x prime equals rx is always x equals c e to the rt. That would be the general solution. I've got particular ones where the c has been solved for, so they would go through a particular point that I would have to define. Um, and that I could write this x prime equals r times x as x minus rx equals zero. Um, one additional piece of information. Um, we just came from a unit on integrating factor or a unit on first order equa equations. And I could actually use integrating factor here with, um, if I know that r is a constant, I could calculate my mu dot 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 and I would get to that same answer. I'm not gonna do that right now, but I think you should see that, oh yeah, that's linear, first order. Um, I could use mu if I wanted, but we also know how to do poked. Bottom line, this guy right here, this is the takeaway of all this, this guy's solution is that guy right there. So, keeping that in mind, um, I'm going to define what a higher order linear differential equation is. So a higher order linear DE. Um, I'm going to define it sort of with an example, and this example is only second order, but it's higher than the first. So I could have AX double prime plus BX prime plus CX equals zero. Um, there are other types of higher order uh, linear differential equations that I can have. Um, for example, I can replace this zero with other things, but we will focus on those later. Um, one thing you should recognize is that um, this thing could be normalized. What I mean by that is we could divide by a and have a coefficient of one here and then have coefficients just here and here. Um, there are, um, hold on. So we are going to work on solving this, okay? Getting a good solution method to this. And it's actually, once you figure it out, it's super simple. Um, but there are going to be a couple guiding principles um, to getting the solution to this. So two Um, and I'll, maybe I'll tell you, so the example that I'm going to do a little bit later is x double prime um, minus 6x prime plus 8x is equal to 0. Now, um, I should also add that these things are wildly applicable all over the place, these second order linear differential equations. Um, and we'll get into that application in that context based. Uh, I um, uh, uh, problem um, later on. We're going to learn how to solve them first. So my principles for solving. One, it's second order. So we should have two C's. One for each level of integration that we want to do. Because um, we're going to integrate twice. I guess that actually brings me to another point. This, in its current form, I can't really solve using conventional calculus. If I integrate everything, then I'd have an x here, but then I'd have an integral of x here and an x prime here still, right? So I can't just like integrate or use u sub or something like that, or even separate variables because over here, like I, I was able to get all the p's and the dp's on one side or the other. Here, this is the second derivative of x, right? First derivative, and x, and like if you were to algebraically try to manipulate this thing to get it to a point where you could solve it using something like separation of variables, you would just get stuck. You would just be walking in circles. You would fix one problem and then wind up at another, right? So I can't use calculus that we know thus far, um, but but what I can do is use use this idea right here. So let me keep going. So one, I I I um. I have to have two C's, and let me convince you of that. Um, say I had a simpler version where um, A was 1, B was um, 0, C was 0, and I actually had a number over here. That would give me X double prime uh, equals, for example, I could have 6, right? 
Well, let me integrate once. If I integrate the left side, I get x prime. If I integrate the right side, if we assume that t is the independent variable, I get 6t plus a constant. Let me integrate again. I would get x equals, because that's integral of x prime is x. Um, when I integrate the 6t, I get 3t squared plus a constant times t um, plus a new c, right? And I'll actually call this c1 and c1 and just call that c2. So you should see that each time I integrate one of these things, each time I do an integration step, I get a c. Um, so I got that c and that c. Um, so we have uh, two integration constants. One here and one here. Let me convince you of that just a little more. Um, say I had, um, if, you, if you're familiar with physics stuff like particle motion, um, uh, then this, this should um, ring some bells. Say I had A of t, acceleration due to gravity, was minus 9.8 um, meters per second squared. Um, and, I, and I wanted to integrate, right? Um, or, and then I go up to velocity. Velocity at any given time is the integral of that. So that's minus 9.8 t plus a constant. In physics, you usually just call that constant v naught. I can integrate again and get, uh, um, I'll call it y, because this would be a height of t is equal to, uh, do some power rule, minus uh, 4.9 t squared plus v naught t plus um, y naught, initial height. So again, um, we have two constants of integration here. Um, one here and one here. So, um, and, and I should specify, you should say, wait, there's no derivatives there. Remember, um, x double prime, or sorry, y double prime of t, if I'm talking about y as a position and a height, is going to be its acceler the acceleration of whatever I'm talking about. So this a prime or a of t equals negative 9.8 is kind of like having a second order differential equation. So that's my, sorry, that's my first principle. Um, and these are my two pieces to make that argument. Um, and then my second principle is, probably shouldn't have that two there. Um, my second principle is that, um, hold on. So I, my second principle is that this, and all I did was copy it from up here, is, this, is in the same form as this guy right here. So let me, this equation is in the same form as um, x prime minus r x equals zero, which had solution x prime equals c e to the r t. Um, so the argument is going to become, it, it, so it's in the same form except for it just has an extra piece with the derivative. If I were to look at this, if I were to ignore this guy right here and just look at this, I could make b equal to 1 and c equal to negative r, and that would give me this solution right here. So what I want you to recognize is that it's just adding another piece. So what, we're, what my strategy here is going to be to say, all right, oh, I have an error. x is equal to, not x prime, I'm sorry. Um, so our strategy, our solution strategy is going to be to try this thing right here to see if I can use that solution to get a solution to this thing right here. And I'll do that in the next video.